We are finally back working on the spec V restoration. Some of you may recognize this is on a rotisserie. We are not working on the body today, but I just want to give you guys an update. I am still working on the car, but obviously doing a restoration this in depth takes a long time. It's actually been over 10 months since I posted a video. So for the couple of guys that comment on pretty much every Sentry video I make, I'm sorry. I wish I could put stuff out a little faster. So I'm attempting to today by working on specifically the engine. I just got the carpet out this morning to work on the underbody, but again, not in this video. I have the long block here. We're gonna tear this thing down, do some measurements, make sure it is perfectly rebuildable. Um, you can see in previous videos, I think I've touched, but it's got a relatively new head gasket and I think it still leaks or the cat was clogged, something, but it ran very poorly. It barely even had enough power to get in the garage. Actually, I think I had to winch it in. One of the things I'm interested in getting to the bottom of is why there is so much oily residue. I mean, the valves are dry because obviously they get direct fire from inside the cylinders, but why the ports are so oily? That valve cap just flew across the shop. I pinched it perfectly somehow. All right, see what's underneath here. Don't think I forgot anything holding the head on. Nope. Wow, that takes absolutely zero effort to spin. It's smooth though, obviously there's no damage to the bottom end. I'm not specifically seeing any surfaces that leak. This coolant one might have been, no. That one's not weeping. Honestly, they all look fine, really. See what's underneath this head gasket. Yeah. It is an MLS. It's it's a pretty decent quality head gasket. It's not a it's not a crappy piece. I mean it's worthless now, but man, those valves are so wet. That's strange. In, it's intake valves too, so see they're not very wet so I don't think it had crankcase pressure maybe the stem seals for the valves were leaking because the tops of the valves are pretty wet that could make it burn a lot of oil maybe that's what was killing the power it was burning so much oil I mean it did smoke like crazy also looking in all the ports in cylinder number four it looks like somebody tried to do like their own porting or something. See the texture on that and the shininess? The rest don't look like that. They're rounded. And this one's kind of flat. I don't really know what that's about.
As with any engine, piston's got a decent bit of carbon build up. The fourth cylinder more than any. And they got pretty normal skirt wear. Um, this engine has a pretty low rod ratio. So, a lot of skirt wear on these. You know, 100 millimeter stroke and 144 millimeter rod. That the bottom of that rod is flying all over the place, which puts a lot of wear on these skirts. So they're not they're not awful, but the ones that I've taken apart previously usually just have the molybdenum coating kind of scuffed off. These seem to be through that and kind of into the base aluminum. So that's probably some of the worst wear I've seen. But it's not hideous, and it's like I said, it's not like damage wear. It's still very smooth, but they're getting replaced anyway. Oh, smells like dead dinosaur farts. Never get over that smell. It's a surprise every single time. Build a hundred motors, doesn't matter. Every time you're like, whoa, worse than I remember. Cylinders are nice and glazed. Looking at the engine bearings, the thrust bearings look pretty decent. No issues there, but the first and the fifth main bearing show a decent bit of wear. Obviously the other side of the same bearing is gonna show the same wear, uh, but more so on the girdle side because this side is lubricated this side only gets whatever is left over now that's not indicative of a failing engine um, the crank the crank journals look very healthy and I'm going to check them here in a minute this could have just been a lack of changing oil I mean it was owned by a teenager so it probably had a hard life Bore gauge is calibrated. Those valve stem seals were tight, hard, and dirty. So, all of the valve stems and the seats are pretty wet, especially on the exhaust side up until, well, the second and like fourth cylinder were dry. If you look at the reflections, wet, 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 wet. They're pretty dry. Wet, 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 wet 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 wettish so the ports being dry on the intake makes me think it's not pcv obviously it the, some oil's coming out so they're gonna be wet but i think it was valve stem seals and when the previous owner did a head gasket probably just overlooked it they didn't want to you know disassemble the whole head so it's part of the rebuild i was going to do anyway so that does it for the teardown. Uh, all these parts are ready to get cleaned. I just realized I need to lay the crankshaft down, like I said, in that one clip. That would be devastating if that thing tipped off the bench. 
If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy Centra content. I want to put out a lot more coming up. There's plenty of work on this car. It's the main thing I've been working on lately. Again, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.